What's up, nerds? Paul Conti here doing a battle report. Free People versus Iron Jaws, a 2,000 point game playing the Scorched Earth scenario. Let's take a quick rundown of the armies. So the Free People, I'm uh, running a general on horseback as my general with the indomitable trait, a general on a griffin with the armor of meteoric iron, two great companies. Uh, each with 40 free guild guard with sword and shield, 10 archers, and 20 hand gunners, then two units of 10 great swords and a hellstorm rocket battery. On the Iron Jaws side, we've got a mega boss on Maw Crusha with Brutish Cunnan and the boss skewer, an orc war chanter, a moon clan grot shaman, a unit of Gorgruntas, a big unit of 15 brutes. 20 Ard Boys, 10 Cave Squigs, and 2 Grot Rock Lavas. So, let's take a look at deployment. Over on my right flank, I've got one of my great companies. I've got the unit of guard with sword and shield uh, up on the front line with the hand gunners behind them. And just off to the left, I've got that unit of archers that goes along with that great company in the middle i've got kind of a strong center sort of strategy going on i've got both of my units of great swords my general on horseback my general on griffin and my hellstorm rocket battery um then off to the left flank i've got my other great company in a similar formation to the right flank with uh the swordsman kind of hanging out over on the leftmost objective. My opponent's side of the board, we've got Gore Gruntas in that forest holding on to that objective. The Maw Crusha uh, in the center, we got the unit of brutes, the unit of Ard Boys, the two rock lavas hanging out in the backfield, the War Chanta and the Shaman hanging out in the middle behind that building. And then over on this end, the cave squigs holding on to that rightmost objective. Uh, my opponent finished deploying first and took first turn. He, uh, before uh, the first turn, I uh, vanguard up both of my units of archers to bait some charges and uh, hopefully shoot at some dudes with my hand gunners. Uh, so on his first turn, he moves up the Maw Crusher into that forest, had to move some trees out of the way. Um, the, he got off the special movement ability to get those uh, Ard Boys to get an extra bit of movement in this phase. Uh, the, um, the Brutes just sort of waddle up a little bit. The Shaman comes out of hiding. The War Chanta follows them. And the Rock Lavas, they just do a little move to get the, their uh, models close enough to that objective to hold on to it with a halfway decent number of models. Uh, the Cave Squigs and the Gore Gruntas both stay behind to hang out on objectives. The this is just another picture of uh, the brutes uh, making their move forward, and this is basically what things look like after the movement phase. Uh, then we go on to shooting, and the rock lava immediately takes out my cannon crew. Uh, so that guy is out of commission for the rest of the game. However, the war machine itself still sticks around, and it happens to be within three inches of that objective marker. So that is pretty useful later on in the game, we will find. Over here, the other rock lava took out a few archers, uh, which then get wiped out by that mock Russia when he charges in. Uh, I did remove models in such a way to get that Maw Crusher out of combat so that he can't uh, participate in any sort of smashing and bashing or anything like that. Um, just wanted to keep him uh, as neutralized as possible. Uh, there was picture missing, but the, uh, the Ard Boys made a charge up the center 
mid a long charge into the great swords and um the i took very few losses on the great swords and just smashed him back outrageously hard with you know uh almost 20 great swords he only took out i think three uh in the first round of combat um and he put like one wound on my general which i then in on my turn retreated out um and then this is after my movement phase on my turn i flew my uh general on griffin up the center uh and away from that combat to try and plug up the center and i was gonna try and make a charge at the rock lavas that was kind of the goal of what i was going with with the uh general on griffin over on the right hand side i just kind of moved up my swordsman a little bit and uh the handgunner stayed in the same spot and popped some shots off on the ard boys uh the i believe the archers also shot at shot at the ard boys but i mean they're archers they don't really do anything um over on the left flank uh on my charge phase he was able to get his special ability off to make a charge at the beginning of my charge phase he charged into my handgunners as well as having um one of my swordsmen in close combat with his maw crusher which is going to become a problem for him later but my hand gunners are not in good shape after uh getting charged by a maw crusher that's for sure um they very quickly uh just start disintegrating um and that flank is not looking particularly good at this point in the game um, however, my center very quickly turned uh, very nicely for me. I got rid of those Ard boys very fast, and um, those hand gunners on the right flank were staying strong. Uh, still 20 strong over there, so they get all of their bonuses. Um, yeah, so this is just what it's looking like at the end of uh, combat and battle shock on my turn. He only had the two Ard boys left. Um, and, uh, everything else is just kind of hanging out in the back. Uh, I lost the role for priority. So, uh, we're back to him doing more shooting. Um, he shot off a few of my great swords, which was not so good for me. Um, and then he made a charge in with his brutes into my archers and into my general on Griffin. Um, and then, of course, just uh, to join the party, the uh, War Chanta got in there, too. Um, so he pretty nicely got a lot of my guys into combat, but he opened up his brutes to just having me lay into them with uh, shooting from my handgunners, who do a ton of work on the brutes over the course of the game. Uh, I believe I took out like five or six just in this one turn between uh, shooting and battle shock. So uh, quite a lot done to those brutes. Um, the line of archers just completely evaporates as I would have expected it to, but uh, they did allow me to trigger off my uh, hand gunners for a shooting phase in uh, my opponent's uh, charge phase. So that was very effective. I liked how that worked. Um, definitely went the way I had planned there. Um, he ended up getting seven wounds onto my general on Griffin in this turn. So that was quite a lot of damage all at once. Um, but uh, he's still standing, still hanging out on a two up save. So he's uh, in good shape in general. Um, all of my, uh, hand gunners get wiped out by the Maw Crusher, obviously, um, didn't think they were going to survive that very long, but I still do have my swordsmen that are in base contact with the Maw Crusher, preventing him from doing anything much more exciting. Uh, when we roll over to my turn, I actually retreat my swordsman out from the combat with the Maw Crusher. My plan here is to conga line them out up to the objective on his end of the board with my swordsman so that I'm defending my own objective and attacking his at the same time with one unit. Now, you can't 
control two objectives at once with one unit. Uh, but you can just say, oh, I'm going to take this one this turn instead and burn it, which is my plan. Over here in the center, I move everybody up and get my great swords ready for a charge into that Maw Crusher to hopefully take it out. Uh, my general and griffin still staying strong in the middle with uh, tangling with those brutes. My uh, swordsman on the right flank, I string out a bit more and I move my hand gunners up so they have better line of sight and, uh, you know, better angles, more guys in range of the brutes and whatever else comes their way. So I'm, in theory, trying to pull the same trick on both flanks where I kind of snake my guys up to the enemy objective and burn it. Um, We'll see how well that goes. Over here, get all of my great swords into combat with the Maw Crusher. They lay a whole bunch of damage into him, um, but one of the units ends up getting completely wiped out by the Maw Crusher, which is really not surprising. He's really big and powerful. Um, my general continues to stick it out and all of the shooting from the hand gunners and the damage coming off of the griffin um uh plus the piercing blood roar of the griffin uh doing some uh extra battle shock to these guys um definitely very helpful um so at this point he i think he's reduced to about five or six brutes left um and i've only taken eight damage on my general on griffin the funny part about this particular combat phase is that we went from seven wounds to eight wounds on the griffin and the brutes had done absolutely nothing and the war chanta was actually the one that got that one additional damage onto him in that turn um so i believe at this point i think looks like this is the top of three i believe i got double turns here and um, continued to snake all of my swordsmen around um, and do shenanigans with them, or at least attempt to. Um... Oh, wait, no, I did not get double turns here because this is where uh, I lose my general to shooting from uh, the Rock Lavas, which really sucked pretty bad. Um... He, uh, I... At, uh, I'm not exactly sure what the sequence of events here was, and I apologize for having kind of missing scene. But basically what happened was I retreated my uh, general on Griffin out of combat, and I charged in my uh, free guild guard to occupy those brutes, um, which ended up working out pretty well. The Griffin just kind of blocked up territory and the swordsmen can just take damage for days from the brutes so i wasn't really too worried about it um i managed to pull off successfully my plan on the left flank with the conga line going up to the objective on the left hand side by pulling off a charge onto the gorgontas and having my long conga line of guys still holding my objective in the back uh, i managed to uh, successfully burned the objective uh, that the Gorgruntas were holding. Um, however, uh, I rolled one, so I didn't really get ahead in points on this turn, but I'm preventing, I'm slowing my opponent down from gaining points and putting him in a position where he really needs to get aggressive in order to win the game. Uh, and then once it rolls back around to my turn, I retreat my guys out as soon as possible so that I just try and preserve that unit. The uh, general on Griffin still holding strong in the middle along with a dwindling unit of free guild guard with sword and shield. Um, getting more shots off on the brutes with my hand gunners, taking more of those guys down. Those, uh, those brutes, you know, the fact that 11 Brutes are down at this point, that is mostly due to hand gunners. Uh, they were really, really strong this game. Um, can only imagine what would have happened if I had both units of hand gunners survive the whole game like that one did. 
However, the Brutes are doing a number on my Swordsmen. They are dwindling significantly, and my plan to go after that objective on the right-hand side is not going to be successful. Um, so he moves his Maw Crusher around to make a charge and go after my objective here in the backfield. Um, he's going to need to clear out the Griffin and the... Um, uh, Hellstorm rocket battery in order to actually raise that objective right now, um, which he is not successful in doing. Um, rock lavas take out a few more uh, swordsmen, and he makes his charge in with the Maw Crusher, gets into both the uh, Griffin and the Hellstorm rocket battery. Takes out the Griffin, does not successfully take out the rocket battery. So we're tied for units within three inches of that objective. And it rolls back over to my turn, where I very quickly make short work of what's left of the Maw Crusher with my hand gunners, and then just retreat and reposition my swordsmen to try and block the brutes from getting anything done. Uh, not a lot else going on on my turn here. I'm holding on to uh, my three objectives. My opponent's only got two objectives at this point, so I'm slowly creeping ahead in points. Um, and his brutes are out of combat. His gore gruntas are coming around uh, and trying to go after my objective, but that's going to be a fruitless exercise over there. Um, in the center, back on his turn, he tries to move his brutes around uh, and then he rolls a crazy long charge and gets them into the hellstorm rocket battery he is successful in uh getting the hellstorm rocket battery and raising the, the objective so this is actually bottom of turn five at this point so basically a roll of a d3 determined the uh end outcome of the game he rolls a one on this and uh, the game ends with a score, I believe, of 15-14. So a very tight game, really good game. Um, a lot of my stuff performed exactly the way I would want it to. Uh, definitely some changes to make to the list for the next time. I think the archers may be a waste. So if I take out the archers, move the great swords, which were definitely outperforming in this game, move those into the great companies now i've got 200 points freed up to do something else um not exactly sure what but um something else um great game in general lots of fun stuff going on uh i definitely have a lot more tinkering around to do with the free guild got a lot of uh experimenting to do and as you can see i've still got a lot of painting and basing to do on all of my guys so um great game with des as always and uh that's about it for now we'll talk to you later folks